Um, Catherine Parr is perhaps the more interesting of the two around clothes because she was known for being incredibly elegant and absolutely adored clothes. So she, used, she had very few clothes, we are told, but they were all absolutely wonderful. And what happened by then, I was four years working on it, so I was getting very brave. And also you have all the time to keep challenging yourself. So I was able by then to you know, really interpret what her character might have been. And it was also nice to do a slightly, she was older than Henry, so to do, you know, that kind of elegant, older woman who was very sure of herself. So that's really what that came out of. And Catherine Howard, when you think of it, she was, you know, 16, 17 years of age. And she had been brought up in what we would call a very bohemian, household and she really didn't know how to be queen and she was constantly trying on dresses and clothes. So I really treated her like, you know, if some one of those reality shows <laughs> with very wealthy young teenagers, you know, who have all this money and not much sense. But because the actress was sort of so pretty and girly. I was able, I loved her clothes because I was able to go right back to something a lot more innocent and frivolous. Yes, I mean, I think she, I got this from Michael Hurst, the writer, that she had through all her years, she was at a co-ed school, which would have been unheard of then. And um, I cannot remember the name of the Duchess of the Second, but one of the Duchesses, she took in like the final child of some household and almost like orphans. And they all, boys and girls, were together in the one school. And she realized at a very young age that to get her own way, you know, to use herself as a sexual being around men, the problem was no one ever told her how to be queen. So one had to be very careful to draw the line between this very giddy young girl, but also that she would break your heart at what happened to her because you know, she was just so full of life. And so in many ways, like a lot of very precocious young people, she also was very innocent because she had no experience of the world. I kind of introduced that quite a bit at that stage because what happened was they, we think nowadays of an ambassador coming to the court of St. James here in London, they came with 60 people. And so everybody would be dying to see what they wore and what their ladies in waiting wore. And the French style was much narrower at the end of the skirt. It had a hoop at the end of the skirt. And the bodice was skin tight. You could hardly breathe in how tight the corset. So as a result, it put the breasts up around the ears. So it, uh, it's a very particular look and suited her very well because um, Tamsin was, I think, size six, so she's a very slight girl. A little, because, you know, no budget would stretch to that. But the two really interesting things, one was that Henry spent, imagine in his money, three million on presents of jewellery. It's, it's quite extraordinary, that amount of money. And also in that Holbein is known as a painter, but what he did around the court, and one of the reasons Henry kept him, is he designed magnificent jewellery. So a lot of the jewellery that Henry gave. And then the good story for the luxury channel is that there's a company in Philadelphia called Sorelli and they are a group of Italian-American women, a grandmother and her granddaughters. And they wrote to me at the end of season one saying, they sent me six pieces of jewelry oh. and said, can we give you a present of these? And they were absolutely superb. And afterwards they sent me about 400 pieces of jewelry. So a lot of jewelry. And then they started designing for the show 
and then Showtime put their goods online, so it's been terrific for them as well. Totally, and except I think she would, you know, something rather simple and elegant, I think, would suit her style, but the tiaras were absolutely exquisite. I mean, they really were that. It's hard to beat a combination of diamonds and pearls. <laughs> we made most of the tiaras towards the end, and they were great fun to do. I think um, what it's kind of gone again in that um, it's very interesting to read at the moment in all the you know the fashion blogs and writers they're all pushing you know, necklines up to here, put it away, dear, the mm -hmm. time has come, you know, to be ladylike again. But a lot of this kind of quite low square neckline did come from um, that whole Tudor and Elizabethan indeed, that to take the shoulder very narrow here became sort of quite a look and a very narrow waist, I think, did. In the Tudor area, they were obsessed by fabric. There was all kinds of discoveries around fabric. And in the portraits of Queen Elizabeth, where she wore a lot of tissue, which is very popular still in the big couture shows, it was Mary Tudor, despite her reputation as Bloody Mary, set up a factory in Cheam to make this tissue. So they really were into beautiful fabrics and beautiful jewellery and um, you know, as women walked into dinner at night, it was um, it was everything. It was like salesmanship and flirting. The clothes had to look good. <laughs>